Hey, today is an amazing day because you'll see behind me is a Ferrari. And if you're following along, you're watching flipping $400 into a Ferrari where I originally started with a $400 initial investment. And I bought a car, fixed a car, sold the car. Bought another car, fixed a car, sold the car. And I'm doing it until I can afford a Ferrari. And this is pretty much what I expect to be able to purchase sometime really soon. Now, can I buy it today? No, I can't because we're not there yet. I'm at $35,000. I'm expecting this car to be like 60 or 70. I really have no idea, but that's what today's video is about. We get to figure out how much money I actually need to be able to afford a Ferrari. Now, blue on blue, not really my cup of tea. I'm thinking red or yellow, but it's probably gonna be a 360 Modena or a Ferrari California. That's somewhere between 60 and 80 grand. Today's auction, and that's the point of this video, is to figure out how much money we actually need to make to be able to afford a Ferrari with just that original investment of $400. So my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So hey everyone, once again, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels and this is a 2010 Ferrari 360 Spider. Super cool car. When I graduated high school, this was an amazing, amazing car. This was the Ferrari you imagined. It's a mid-engine car, glass back, weird cloth top with vinyl faded windows, and it looks like it's all kind of, I don't know, tarnished, and there's some wear. That's really strange. It was probably stored away in a garage with the top down, which is why the top looks like that. Now, this car is a true supercar. We have our F1 paddle shifters and shifter right there. This is the origination of paddle shifters. Now every sports car, including my Corvette, is an automatic. It's so difficult to get them in standard transmissions. This came in a gated six speed or the F1 paddle shifters like I had in my Maserati from a year or two ago. Paddle shifters are here. The problem with these cars is these clutches need to be serviced like every 30,000 miles. So you don't know if you're buying something great or if you're buying somebody's neglected project because they didn't want to spend the money to have the clutches service. Now this car is at a dealer auction. And that's what's amazing. I'm at a dealer auction. I spend a lot of money to have a dealer's license, have a dealership, and I should get discounts accordingly. I mean, this car should be less than what you or most of you in the public should pay for it. And today we're gonna to find out. Now I've seen them all over the market and actually some of you with these cars have reached out to me and said, Craig, I gotta get 50, 55, 60, 70, whatever it is, whatever the number is, our budget's just not there yet. So I appreciate you reaching out to me. I would have bought it had we had the money because I can't take it out of my business money to go buy it. Otherwise, this whole video series is a moot point. I wanna be able to afford it off that $400. But this car, I'm wondering if it's going to be less than I could buy it from the public. So is it gonna be 50 or less? Or is it gonna be 60 or 70? Now we've done this before where this car sold at auction and it was yellow for 60 and change plus auction fees. What is that? Oh, that sounds awful. Now being a 2002, technology is pretty dated in this car. I mean, the radio's dated. Let's see if it starts. Slow to start, slow to start, slow to start, slow to start. Now that might be because of the alarm. So let's turn the radio off, we'll hit the alarm button, and we will try to start this mother. There we go. That's pretty, that sounds pretty good. That is cool. But think about it, a 3.6 liter V8. I mean, those cylinders must be tiny. But here is a big problem. That right there is a check engine light and a parking light. Well, the emergency brake's on, so the parking light, but there is also a check oh. engine light. Do I want to buy a Ferrari with a check engine light? Absolutely not. And this is a specialty sale, so it's as is. I'm buying a Ferrari for $50,000, and I'm buying it as is without really being able to test drive it. I don't really like the color. Blue is not my pick. We have our mirror defrosters, our fog lights, the steering wheel. So this shifter is wild. So you'll see reverse. I just put my foot on the brake, and I click it into reverse. I don't even actually know how to use this. It's completely different than what my Maserati is. I thought you just pull it back. Pull it up, ah, there you go. 
So you pull it up and pull it back, and it goes into reverse. You pull it up and push it forward, I think, you click it, I don't know what to do. So I'm in reverse right now, because it says reverse right there. Now if I push it forward and hold it, does it go into park? I have, I have no idea. Now I can tell you my Maserati had the same F1 transmission and I'd actually just leave it in reverse, pull the emergency brake up to leave it in like a park mode because it didn't have park. If I left it in neutral, it was literally that. It was in neutral. There was no park for it. I'm not really a fan of this F1 style transmission. The AC is cold with the books in it. No books either. So there's a lot going against this car. I mean, if I'm buying a Ferrari, you really want a nice Ferrari. You don't want a project Ferrari. So, how do you open the trunk? I don't even know. Well, I guess it would be a frunk, right? It would be in the front. I don't even, see, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even own a Ferrari because I don't know anything about these cars. But how else are you gonna learn unless you own it and do your research? I don't even know how to open that trunk. I can tell you the lights are on though and I didn't leave those on. All right, so we're gonna go into the auction and see what this car goes for, and that way we know what kind of budget we need to have to be buying this stuff. Let's go inside the auction and check it out. Look at this car right here. This looks like something the Joker would have driven in Suicide Squad. It is the right color, it is the right shape and style. This car is unreal. Now compare it to that Ferrari we were just looking at, it is a horse of a different color. Look at oh. The idea is the same, right? It's a mid-engine, it's an Italian supercar. The cool thing is, Lamborghini started from building tractors and they wanted to compete with Ferrari out of a gentleman's bet and a quarrel. Look at that car, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I don't even know what to guess on what this car is gonna go for, but today we're gonna find out. Now here's the thing, I'm not about to stop this challenge on a Ferrari 360, that's not the end goal. That right there is the end goal. Not only am I gonna find out what we need to be able to afford that Ferrari, I don't really want, today we're gonna figure out how far do we need to ride this out to be able to afford that 2015 Huracan behind me right there. A few moments later. So look at what we have behind me. This is the Ferrari I'm expecting to be able to afford realistically soon. This is a good opportunity to figure out how much money we need to earn to be able to afford an actual Ferrari. $50,000. And would you say $40,000? $45,000. $40,000. $50,000. I'm bidding on this Guys, freshly serviced clutch was just done at 19,000 miles. Car needs nothing. 52 and 5. I got 50 grand asking 52.5. Can I take a reserve off of that car? Hey, 52, 500, two, 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 the problem is the odometer is showing on this car. I don't know the actual mileage. It's just been serviced. The car is ready to go. 60,000. Hey, 60,000. So this car is at $65,000, that's what they want for it. Figure a buyer's fee on top of the $65,000 is 8%, round up to 10%, so add $6,500. So we're into it for about $71,500 before even transporting it back to my shop. It's the wrong color, I don't know what the mileage is, the top has some wear in it, but they said the clutches were done, which is pretty great, but they don't have to provide any type of receipts. So I need to expect to spend around Sixty to seventy thousand dollars. But look at that car. That truly is amazing. I don't like the color, but look at just look at that. It really is a beautiful supercar. That is incredible. Meanwhile. <laughs> Eventually. So the Lambo went through and it did not sell. 
But now we know $225,000-ish will potentially buy this car. So we have a goal in mind. We can buy the 360 Modena for around 60 to 70,000. Then we can sell that one and move on to a better Ferrari like a California. And then from there, a hope it just keeps snowballing until we can afford ourselves a Huracan. So that's it for today's Ferrari Flip series. It had nothing to do with me actually buying a Ferrari. I need a goal in mind. I need something to work towards for all of us. We need to know how much money we need to buy a Ferrari. And then what's after that? And then what's after that? Because I'm not gonna end at an O2 Ferrari 360 Spider. That's not the end goal. I want something nice. I want a real Ferrari. But at least we can get there and I know what I need to get to as far as a price. So for now, that's it. I'll see you later in the next video because we have so many videos coming out. So many car videos and I bought some really cool things. So anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. There's a bell. Ding. You hit the bell, it'll give you a notification every time I make a video. A thumbs up helps me because it boosts the algorithm. And you know, my kids' soccer is getting expensive. So when you give the thumbs up, it gets recommended to more people. And then more people see my videos. And then it helps me pay for my wife's coffees at Starbucks and my kids' soccer. Also, you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook with links in the description. That's it for now. I'll see you later. Have a great day. Adios.